<laughs> I finally caught up with the rest of the world yesterday and saw Jurassic World. It's only been out for, what, two weeks? Um, I blame this. Um, I liked it. It was way fun. I felt the need for more T-Rex, actually. I'm a big fan of the T-Rex ever since the first movie, where they did that huge introduction um, of him stepping out of the paddock for the first time in the rain. It was awesome. And it still looks great. Effects back in 1993. Anyway, yeah, I wanted more T-Rex. I was wondering where he was the whole time until they brought him out, the, out at the end to save their butts, which was pretty funny. Yeah, it was good. I liked it a lot. And it was, um, I mean, <laughs> there was quite a bit of cheese, especially towards the end. I never want to be in a situation to depend upon raptors to save my butt because I just feel like that that wouldn't happen very smoothly or at all. That's one thing I had trouble with because um, Chris Pratt's character did. They imprinted on him when they were born and so they knew him from birth and they, ki they kind of, they were, I don't want to use the word tame because they weren't, but they were a little more controlled around him when he was there. And I guess it was some kind of mutual respect, like, hey, bro, I got your back. I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of weird. Yeah, because everybody needed to be saved from this big, fat, genetically enhanced um, monster that they created for fun for a new attraction at the park. And we get that from the trailers, basically. But, um, yeah, I really liked the movie. It was fun. It kind of had a... a Lost World vibe to it because there were some cheesy parts in that too and it was a little more fun and a little more interactive with the raptors and all of that stuff. That was one thing I was afraid of with this movie. I thought it was going to be like in the third Jurassic Park, the one that we do not speak of because it was so horrible. Like I feel like they emasculated the T-Rex because they wanted to make that other dinosaur look so big and badass. And it, uh, I just uh, hated it. I hated it so much because it killed, like, it killed the T-Rex close to the beginning. And when the T-Rex roared, it was more like, moo, instead of the impressive roar that we all know and love. They were just downplaying him so much to make this other, what do they call it, the Spinosaurus look all big and bad. And it was, that was a real dinosaur, yeah, but they didn't swallow satellite phones. As far as I know. That was the difference, though. With this new one, Jurassic World, this new breed of dinosaur that they created actually was very scary. And you felt apprehension and fear when you knew that it was loose, that it had escaped and everything. And so I really appreciated that. I did not feel that with the third Jurassic Park movie. Maybe we can just call this one the third Jurassic Park movie and pretend that that one never even was made. Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be nice. I'd like that. But yeah, Jurassic World. It's very good. It was fun. And it was a lot, there were lots of homages. Um, is that a word? They paid a lot of plural homage to uh, the first movie. Yeah, if you know the first movie at all, you will be able to see them and appreciate them. Anyway, I also wanted to discuss a problem, a big problem that I had with that movie. I've always liked Chris Pratt. I always have, ever since um, Parks and Rec, um, Parks and Recreation. I loved, I loved him as Andy. He was so great. And I loved him as, um, what was his name, Peter in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was fantastic in that. He was really great. In this movie, though, I was suffering from, um, my sister coined the phrase, uh, hotness against my will, which has been happening a lot more lately. When I say hotness against my will, or H-A-M-W, I don't know, there's not really a way to pronounce that, ham -w. 
but we'll figure that out anyway. But I know a lot of other people have suffered from this. And I wrote down an official definition. It's um, the instance a previously appreciated, yet for whatever reason, not lust worthy celebrity suddenly and without precedence appears undeniably attractive without warning. I find it very offensive. Yeah, and Chris Pratt, oh, it's, it is undeniable in that movie. My gosh. I couldn't believe it. I was like, how dare you? I get, I get mad. It makes me mad. <laughs> first, it first happened to me with Benedict Cumberbatch in Star Trek Into Darkness when he played Khan. I mean, I'd seen him as Sherlock. I'd seen him in other stuff, and I liked him. I thought he was a good actor. I thought he was great. I had no problem. You know, I liked him. But then in Star Trek Into Darkness, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, I got really mad at him. And I, yeah, and then I just started watching everything he, he ever made, and I just went downhill from there. And recently, um, watching Daredevil on Netflix, Charlie Cox who plays Matt Murdock. I had seen him in Stardust years ago. When was that? 2007? And he had long hair and that pouty lip and he was just kind of dorky. And so I was like, ah, oh, he, 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 cute. But, um, in Daredevil, it's like, it's like a, almost a different person. I couldn't believe that it was the same dude. I was... <laughs> I was like, what are you doing to me? This isn't fair. I was, I was actually very offended. Yeah, I felt blindsided by it. And I kind of felt that way with Chris Pratt in this last movie. I think I can say the same for Chris Evans, too. He has been slowly hotness against my will. Very slow, creeping up. Ever since the first Captain America movie. <sighs> yeah, it just drives me nuts. It makes me mad. I can't do it. But yeah, with Chris Pratt, I don't know what I'm going to do with him now. I need to go back and watch uh, Parks and Rec where he's just cute and cuddly and dumb and helpful. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and that was another thing too. Chris Pratt's character was very, he was very manly and he was very in control. Yeah, he was supposed to be an ex-Navy SEAL and um, just had respect for the animals and everything like that. And my brother was like, this is like an audition. This whole movie is like an audition for the Indiana Jones reboot. Because we all know the rumors and some of the actual facts that um, Chris Pratt is in line to be the next Indiana Jones. And typically, I'm not in favor of reboots of classics like that. At least, I mean, Harrison Ford isn't even dead yet. That's what I say. It's like when they did, um, they did Point Break, and I was like, Keanu Reeves isn't even dead yet. Why are you doing that? It's that sort of thing. I have that kind of problem. Um, they're remaking movies that were made in my lifetime, that sort of thing. However, Chris Pratt is perfect for it if they did like a younger Indiana Jones um, like maybe placed it in the 1930s before the war broke out oh, yeah I think he would be great like if he was a student still a student or something and they just the adventures and the crap that he got himself into I think that would be really really great but um, yeah we'll have to see what comes of that and I'll end up seeing a lot more of Chris Pratt, so I need to deal with it.